Picture this, a $50 million metro project, right in the heart of one of the world's most visited cities. Yet not a single major country wanted to get involved. Not the US, not Japan, not even any European nation. In fact, 27 countries said no. Some ignored the offer completely. Others walked away after seeing the details. Too risky, too messy, and not worth the hassle. That's how the world viewed this Turkish metro plan, an underground headache in Istanbul, buried under logistical chaos and unstable terrain. But then, something unexpected happened. China jumped in. And not just to try, but to finish the whole thing in less than six months. Yes, the very project that most countries refuse to even consider, China completed in record time. So the big question is, how did they manage it? And even more intriguing, is Chinese infrastructure really that advanced? Or is there something deeper going on? This is a story of international doubt, fearless ambition, and a project that changed perspectives worldwide. Let's unpack it. To see why this metro plan became such a non-starter globally, we need to rewind to Istanbul, a city that's always bursting at the seams. Every year, more than 15 million tourists flood its ancient streets. Locals and visitors alike squeeze through busy neighborhoods where centuries-old buildings, traffic chaos, and wheat ground all overlap. Now here's the shocking part. For years, some of the busiest tourist areas in Istanbul didn't even have a fully functional underground metro. The need was crystal clear. Reduce congestion, cut travel time, and upgrade the city's image. So Turkey opened the project to global bidders. They launched an international competition, expecting big countries to jump in. But what they got was silence. Of the 28 countries contacted, 27 declined. Some didn't even bother sending engineers to inspect the area. Why? The problems piled up quickly. Istanbul's landscape is dense, historical, and sits on soft, earthquake-prone ground. The proposed metro would run through some of the city's most jam-packed tourist zones, making construction a nightmare. Plus, Turkey's economy at the time was shaky, raising questions about financing and project stability. Even top engineering nations like the US and Japan quietly backed away. Too risky, too uncertain, too much trouble. For a while, it seemed like the project was dead. Then came the twist. Out of nowhere, China's CNR Giant Machinery Company Limited raised its hand and said, we'll take it. This shocked many international observers. Why would China accept a project so many had passed on? Earthquake risks, tight timelines, political friction, it was a perfect storm of problems. But for China, this wasn't chaos. It was an opportunity. You see, China has quietly become the world's go-to builder for tough infrastructure. From mountain ranges in Pakistan to remote parts of Africa, Chinese firms have laid roads, railways, and bridges in places others saw as impossible. This confidence comes from a mindset rooted in China's own development. A belief summed up simply, build first, then thrive. It's the same thinking that helped transform China from a mostly rural country in the 1980s into an economic giant, now home to more high-speed rail than the rest of the world combined. They didn't wait for the perfect moment. They created it. So when Turkey's metro challenge came up, China saw something familiar, a project that looked like its own past, and a chance to prove, once again, that it could deliver where others wouldn't even try. And China didn't just make promises, they started building. In infrastructure, metro lines are usually slow-moving efforts. Tunneling, traffic management, safety checks. It's normal for these to take 18 to 24 months, sometimes longer. But China? They did it in just under six months. That's not just fast. That's almost unbelievable. So how did they manage it? First, manpower. Chinese construction teams are known for their discipline and precision. They worked in nonstop shifts, like a baton handoff in a relay race. No idle time, no wasted effort. Next, modular construction. Instead of building everything piece by piece on site, many components were pre-made elsewhere and then assembled on location, like giant Lego pieces. This cut both time and error. But speed wasn't the only challenge. There were two major threats to the project's success. One, the COVID-19 pandemic. It disrupted supply chains and limited labor mobility. Two, Istanbul's complicated geography, a city layered with ancient history, split across two continents, prone to quakes and filled with daily crowds. Despite all this, the metro was completed to high safety standards. The new line ran through two of Istanbul's busiest commercial zones and was designed to handle up to 90,000 people per hour. That's the size of a small city every hour. 
And yes, it's built to withstand earthquakes, a necessity in this region. This wasn't just a construction job, it was a test of logistics and engineering on a massive scale. Speed is impressive. Safety is critical. But what really made this metro stand out? It's the combination of all three. Performance, protection, and personality. Let's talk specs. The trains were tested at speeds of up to 120 km per hour, faster than many urban systems worldwide. And the most impressive part? They stayed remarkably stable at high speeds, even under stress. The train was engineered to endure earthquakes. A real concern in Istanbul, where tremors are a genuine threat, not just a distant possibility. So this wasn't just about speed. It was about strength. But China didn't stop at making it functional. They also made it beautiful. The metro's interior was designed with Turkish culture in mind. The theme? Tulips. A flower with deep roots in Turkish history. The color palette was inspired by Ottoman designs and local tastes. Warm hues, graceful lines, and an inviting polished aesthetic. That kind of design elegance is rare in massive infrastructure. Even the outside was treated with anti-graffiti coating. It's a small touch, but one that shows careful planning and respect for the cityscape. When Turkish leaders toured the completed line, they were reportedly amazed, not just at how quickly it was finished, but at the care that went into it. Imagine being told a foreign nation would build your metro in half a year, and when it's done, it feels entirely your own. That's more than construction. That's diplomacy set in metal and concrete. When news broke that China had completed Istanbul's metro in just six months, disbelief spread quickly. Especially in the United States, where critics and officials questioned everything. The timeline, the workmanship, even the safety. Headlines hinted at hidden flaws. Rumors spread about untested procedures. Some insisted it couldn't have been done properly. From a Western viewpoint, that skepticism made sense. Infrastructure in many developed countries often takes years to complete, slowed down by red tape, regulations, and bureaucratic hurdles. So, a six-month turnaround sounded almost unreal. But Turkey didn't waver. Turkish officials pushed back against foreign criticism, stressing that every part of the build had been independently verified. Engineers confirmed that the structure passed all inspections. Stress tests were successful, safety protocols followed, and in some aspects, standards were surpassed. One official remarked, This isn't just China's metro, it's ours. Built in Turkey, supervised by our people, and up to our regulations. Perhaps the most unexpected shift came from within Turkey. Local engineers and experts, many of whom had doubts early on, started changing their tune. After riding the trains, inspecting the tunnels, and reviewing the construction data, many were convinced. What they saw wasn't a rush job. It was a new gold standard. The Istanbul Metro became an example, not of corner cutting, but of what's possible when time is optimized without lowering quality. Globally, the project began to rewrite the script. China was no longer seen as just a low-cost producer. It was earning a reputation as a capable and efficient builder, especially in places where respect isn't given easily. For Istanbul, this metro was more than a symbol of speed or status. It brought relief. Before it opened, traffic clogged the city daily. Istanbul's roads, packed with both locals and tourists, were often jammed. A ride that should take 20 minutes could easily take over an hour. The new metro line has changed that. Today, the train transports over 600,000 people every day. That's more than the population of some entire European cities. And with speeds reaching up to 120 kilometers per hour, travel time between two of Istanbul's busiest districts has dropped from nearly 60 minutes to just 15. That's not just a time saver, it's a game changer. Less congestion means cleaner air. Fewer cars mean lower emissions, crucial in a city long battling smog and exhaust fumes. And the impact keeps growing. According to Turkey's Ministry of Transport, the metro line is projected to save over 29 million Turkish lira annually, thanks to lower fuel use, shorter commute times, and improved productivity. That's money that can be funneled into education, healthcare, or even more transit projects, and we can't overlook the jobs. From construction workers to station operators and maintenance staff, the metro has generated steady employment at a time when rising inflation and financial strain have affected countless Turkish households. Then there's tourism. Istanbul ranks among the most visited cities on the planet. A modern, fast, and spotless metro system means tourists can get to famous landmarks more easily, enjoy smoother hotel pickups, and have a better overall experience. 
that could lead to travelers staying longer and spending more money. In that sense, this single metro line is doing more than just moving passengers. It's helping push Turkey forward economically, socially, and environmentally. So what does all this really mean? This isn't just a local story about a train line in Istanbul. It's a clear signal that the global balance of infrastructure power is changing. For years, when nations planned big projects, they turned to the West for help from the U.S., Japan, or long-established European engineering firms. But now, something new is happening. China isn't just catching up. In many cases, it's pulling ahead. What took place in Turkey is symbolic. The country needed a partner. The traditional powers declined, and China stepped in with a simple message, let's build. And they did, quickly, efficiently, safely, with attention to local culture and technical excellence. This could mark the start of a new era in global infrastructure, with China leading the way in building the roads, ports, railways, and energy systems of the 21st century, not just in Asia and Africa, but across Europe, Latin America, and beyond. So the big question is, are we ready for that future? Are Western nations ready to match China's speed, scale, and delivery? Will developing countries start seeing Beijing not as a backup option, but as their first pick for bold infrastructure dreams? Of course, this also raises deeper issues. Is China's model truly sustainable in the long run? Can it expand worldwide without sparking backlash, debt concerns, or political tensions? These are questions we'll continue to dig into on this channel. But for now, one thing is clear. A single metro line in Istanbul just sent a powerful global message. The future of construction and infrastructure might look very different than what we used to imagine. So what's your take? Are we witnessing a new chapter in global development or is this just a one-time story? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, subscribe and join us as we break down the economic changes shaping our world. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more hot news from Daily News. Catch you in the next one.